I was reading uh, Will Smith's autobiography and he was talking about his manager and there was a movie that uh, a deal that came on the table and it was a few months I was reading this a few months ago I was reading this so I might get a couple details wrong but basically he was already doing well in hip hop and then he was already cast on the Fresh Prince and he was trying to get into doing movies but he wanted to do like big time like he wanted to become a movie star essentially oh, wow. like the the next phase of his career going from like you know, rapper going from artist to actor, mm-hmm. you know, like television actor, and then moving into being like movie star, mm. which he obviously ended up doing. But the first uh, deal that got put on the table was a fat check. It, it, was, it was several million dollars to play. Uh, I think it was like a gang member or something in a in a, a movie that was coming out, and it was fairly well known, like cast or something as well. And Will was super pumped about the opportunity. I mean, he was a several million dollar offer. I, I want to say two or three million dollars something wow. like that. And it was like one of the first big movies Mm -hmm. that was offering him anything. And his manager was like, he got on the phone with his manager and his manager was like, we should not take this. And Will was just, you know, flabbergasted that he was giving him this advice. (laughs) Yeah, because obviously because his manager makes a percentage Mm -hmm. of that whole contract, Mm -hmm. which is a lot of money for him. So he was like, okay, well, why not? And so he starts giving all these reasons about like, hey, if you want, like, let me just clarify. You want to be Tom Cruise, right? Mm -hmm. Tom Cruise at that time was like Mm -hmm. the guy. You want to be like this movie star. Well, if you take this role, it's not going to put you on a path to get to that yes. to get to that point. It's gonna it's gonna pigeonhole you into this particular part. That's a good you're never gonna get offered anything else. Like your brand is gonna be that, and you're gonna you're gonna solidify yourself here, and you're never gonna be able to move to the next step. Mm-hmm. So I ended up taking a different role that was almost a th- again. You kind of have to. Double check me on the details, but I think it was one tenth of the size of the paycheck. It was literally like wow. it, was a, it was a six figure deal. It was not seven figures. It was a couple hundred thousand dollars to do a different part, but it was much more of like an intense acting role mm. um, where Will was able to really like bust out some real acting chops. Mm-hmm. Um, so he saw and, the long term. Yeah, it was, it was like- just like they both took a much smaller paycheck um, so that they could set themselves up to get yeah. the next role and get the next role. And then obviously Smart. he went on that crazy stretch of movies that just kept breaking record after mm-hmm. record with you know I Hancock love, was and it I am legend I am legend I love that movie yeah Hancock I am legend pursuit of happiness like I just a, just like hit after hit after yep. hit after hit breaking box office records uh, but I thought it was really an interesting part of the story to mm-hmm. see that like if you, I, I tell people all the time if you're not in the lo- if you're not in the long game you're in the wrong game yes and that's a perfect example of what that looks like it's like they said no to a high dollar figure short-term mm-hmm. money mm-hmm. so that they could say yes to what their goal ultimately was yeah um which is you know exactly what you're talking that's about. that's a great point i actually just like a real life example of something that just happened for this with my other client uh the amanda nicole mm-hmm. um so we were offered uh, a, a hosting gig um and they were giving her uh, I gave my rates or our rates and I said, this is how much it is for the rate. And he was like, oh, I t- spoke, this is the booking guy who was helping us with this. And he was like, we actually cannot offer you that. We're going to give you this. It was literally l- less than half of my initial yeah. rate. And so I'm like, okay, l- again, like this happens in the industry where you have to counter offer things. So I can't, after discussing it with Amanda, uh, we're like, okay, well, like, l- let's see the value in this. Like maybe, you know, motion and this this and that right so we raised the we countered and said we'll give it to you for this amount he still said no they are not offering that so we declined it and it was still good money like mm-hmm. don't get me wrong mm-hmm. it's still great money and for me and she was she was actually down and to your point I said, no, I had to say, yep. no, I'm sorry, we're not doing it because then you're going to- You're setting that, a standard. Exactly, yeah. you have to set a standard for yourself. And her value is way more than that. I'm like, sorry, your value is more than that. So yeah. no. And yeah. and I went back to them and you know what's going to happen is eventually they're going to be like, okay, they weren't playing with yeah. us. If like, we really want her, we are going to we're going to pay, pay for it. Way. Yes. Yeah. And, and I literally said that. I was like, okay, so maybe you can't right now, but when you have a big enough budget or you can do something that's in line with our pricing, we'd yeah. be happy happy to work with you guys. In the meantime, I have another influencer that is in your price range. And that's what I did. So I brought another friend of mine who's an influencer that's in their price range. And I actually was able to close the deal for her instead. So, you know, it'll work out, but that's exactly, um, to your point, you have to do that sometimes. Yeah, absolutely.